morning, this is Pastor Green. Welcome to our weekly Bible study. We're so elated to have you with us tonight. We are in the Acts of the Apostles, and we will be looking at chapters 11 and 12 tonight. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege of standing before your people and opening up the unadulterated Word of God. So we thank you for the opportunity. We ask you for clarity of mind and thought that we may receive, that we may transfer this knowledge, that we can comprehend and apprehend the great truths of Scripture. So we thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now, in, in, uh, we saw, as we've been going through the Acts of the Apostles, which is really the Acts of the Holy Spirit, and great things have been happening as the church was birthed on the day of Pentecost. Uh, in these first, the first few years of the church, it grew tremendously, miraculously. And what we have seen, especially in these last few uh, outings, um, the last few chapters, we've seen these miraculous conversions. Uh, we saw in chapter 10, um, where, uh, uh, where, well, going even going back to chapter eight, we saw the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch. We saw the conversion of Saul of Tarsus. Uh, we saw the conversion of Cornelius, and, and uh, the Holy Spirit is moving. Uh, Peter preached that sermon, and three thousand people got saved, and, and, and it was miraculous. So we've seen these miraculous conversions where people hear the gospel message, hear that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sin, they are convicted by the Holy Spirit, and they receive Jesus. It's, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. These, these miraculous conversions, and they're continuing. And so as we get here in chapter, in chapter 11, uh, um, it, it starts out, not only do you see the conversions, but there is a convergence, where a convergence of people, where the Holy Spirit is bringing people together miraculously because God does not intend for anybody to do the work by themselves. So what he does, he strategically puts people together so that they can, uh, uh, they can learn from each other, they can be resources for, for each other because two can get more done than one. And it's just as simple as that. Uh, I think it was the great um, uh, 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 Charles Haddon Spurgeon said he'd rather put a thousand men to work than try to do the work of a thousand men. And that's how God intends it. He wants us to work as a team. But there were no teams at this time, so God had to team people up. And the Holy Spirit had to get the right people together. And we see him continuing to do that. And this is what's happening right here when we get to chapter 11. Uh, and the apostles and brethren that, in, that were in Judea heard that Gentiles had also received the word of God, and when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they were of the circumcision contended with him. These were the Jewish Christians. Right now, uh, at this point, most of the people who are saved were Christians, or were, who were Christians were Jews. These were converted Jews. And what do we know about the Jews? Jews are Jews. They got this mindset. They might be saved, but they're still Jews. They're still, these are the same folk that called Jesus, uh, that, that when Jesus came in on, on the donkey, they said, uh, Hosanna, Hosanna. And, and just a few days later, they said, crucify. These are the same people. So they got issues. These are the same people that look, that, 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 that look down on non-Jews. And nothing changed about them. They've been born again, but they still don't know nothing. The Holy Spirit still has not been able to do a work in their lives and change, uh, uh, you know, the, the pruning shears have to come off and all that dead wood in your life got to come out. And that, hey, that only comes under teaching. That only comes as you continue on in the apostles' doctrine, as you continue to learn the word, as you continue to apply the word. Well, they ain't had it yet because they ain't been out that, that long. They just got exposed to it. They're going to heaven, but right now they don't know anything. 
So the Holy Spirit has to continue to do the work. So verse 2, and when Peter would come up to Jerusalem, they were of the circumcision contended with him. They got mad at Peter because uh, 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 you preaching and, and non-Jews getting saved. We heard that non-Jews getting saved. Look what they say in verse 3. Saying, thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and did eat with them. See, it's these same Jews, they still got those same old prejudices that they always had. And they got to overcome those, but guess what? God got a way of doing that too. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. Uh, basically what he did, what we studied last time, about how he met miraculously with Cornelius, he just relayed that whole story. And that's what we get here at the beginning of verse 4. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, and a certain vessel descended as it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me. Upon the which, when I tried, when I fastened mine eyes, I considered <coughs> and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice, a voice from heaven, saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. We all know that chapter. We all know that verse. Okay. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common nor unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. Peter's being an old Jew himself. They have followed the Old Testament law. So when, when the Holy Spirit is trying to get them to, to accept this new doctrine, that, that see, the, the law has been fulfilled. You don't need to try to keep this no more. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sin so that you no longer have to deal with the law. It's been fulfilled. It's been completed. Now you get to go to the next step, and that's where they are now. And this was done three times, and they were drawn up again into heaven. So, the, so the, the vision came, and it, he, he, it, the, the Holy Spirit taught him what he needed to see, showed him what he needed to see in, in verse 11. And behold, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me. Now, if y'all remember that story, they got a vision, and they told him to go, see, go, to, to, go to Joppa. They got they they received the vision. The Holy Spirit spoke to them and said, Y'all go to Joppa mm -hmm. and, and, and you need to meet somebody. Well, guess what? When they got there, well, well, uh, well Peter got the vision to expect them. Mm -hmm. And and behold, immediately there were three men already coming to the house where I was. I sent sent from Caesarea unto me, and the Spirit bade me to go with them. Nothing died, and moreover, these six brothers accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house and he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house which stood and said unto him send me into Joppa and call for Simon who served him with Peter well guess what Peter they, these folk didn't know Peter from Adam but they came to him and knew who he was the Holy Spirit had told them they told, he, they told the men to go to Peter, and they told Peter, expect the men. That's what the Holy Spirit did. He did by the age of seven angel. Who shall tell the word, who shall tell the words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? Uh, Peter's going to come and gonna tell y'all the words how y'all can get saved. So you need to go to him. So they went. And Peter told them the word, and they got saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. The same thing that happened to us on Pentecost happened to them. Mm -hmm. They began to speak with tongues, they got saved, and, 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 and the rest is history. Then remember I, the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could listen to is asking the question? What was I that I could listen to God? Who am, I, who am I to question God? God can save whoever he wants. All I got to do is just do my part. So when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God. Now the good thing is, when Peter testified as to what had happened, instead of acting like the old Jews, they received it. 
They started being mad. They were glad because they understood it. The people were able to make a break to the world. They understood that this is this is the move of God. See, when God is moving, you can't stop it. You might as well get on board. Verse 19. Well, and when they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then had God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. That is a powerful statement right there. They recognize that the Gentiles are part of this thing too. Not just us. Now they, which were scattered abroad upon the persecutions that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Spanish and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none, uh, uh, to none but unto the Jews only. So basically when they first started getting scattered, they were preaching the word just to the Jews. But God got a new thing going. He said he had, to, he had to let them know that you got to preach to folk other than Jews. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening here. And some of them, which were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, which when they would come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Now, these were black folk, Cyprus and Cyrene. This remember Simon that carried the cross? When Jesus uh, collapsed under the weight of the cross, that was a man by the name of Simon, a Cyrenian. Uh, the, this is a, a, an area in uh, northern Africa. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent for Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord for he was a good man full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord then departed Barnabas unto Tarsus for to seek Saul so Barnabas went and hooked up with Saul Saul was the the, had been the number one persecutor but now Saul has been converted and Barnabas has to come and minister to him because God got a plan for, for Saul but Saul don't know anything yet, yet Saul just understood the basics now Saul and Barnabas ministers to Saul Saul and Barnabas had to get together so that, Paul, so that, so that God would be able to use Saul, who became Paul later, actually soon and very soon. And when they had found him, they brought him to Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Uh, up until this time, they used to call them the people of that way. And, and really, when they started calling them Christians, it was a derogatory term. That's like calling us nigger. Mm -hmm. Then we turned it around and hey, you my nigger. Mm -hmm. So you know, you understand me. It, so they accepted the, the, the derogatory term and it's okay. I I keep that. If you, if you want to call me a Christian, I call myself one. I'm proud. Mm -hmm. They talked about it at first. When they use that term Christian, that's like calling um, an Italian person a wop or a dago or a, a, a you know, you know, everybody ever watched um, All in the Family, some of the language that Archie Bunker used to use when he talked about people of other uh, ethnicities. When you just go ahead and wear it, I, they wore that label proudly and we use it to this day. And, and in these days came prophets from Jerusalem uh, to Antioch. And what is actually happening, the church moved out, the, the, the central core of the church moved out of Jerusalem because of the, uh, the persecution was so bad in Jerusalem, then they went to Antioch. And Antioch actually became the center of the Christian universe at that point. And these days came the prophecy from Jerusalem to Antioch, and there stood one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that he should, he should be that, that there should be great dark throughout all the world, and it came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar, uh, when it, when basically there was going to be a great famine, and then the God gave him a vision that the famine was coming. 
and, and, and y'all need to prepare for the family. Say nothing like having a heads up. God, okay, it's going to be some hard times, but if y'all get ready when the hard times come, you be ready for it. And then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. So they actually, this is the first uh, time they actually got together and sent a missionary supplies uh, to a uh, outside their own comfort zone. Uh, what we see here being practiced is is a, a collective economics, which still is practiced in the church today. You know, one of the uh, great ways that, uh, you know, pastors are notorious for this. If one church might be struggling, so uh, they'll have, uh, you throw a, um, a, a, a revival, another church is coming, they bring gifts to support that church. Uh, you know, uh, 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 um, uh, Saved by Grace and us, we, we, meet, we have a combined service on every fifth Sunday mm -hmm. to support each other. That's what we do. Uh, uh, a lot of associations do the same thing, and that they will uh, uh, come together, and, and uh, uh, many churches come and and bless that house that's hosting. Everybody get a chance eventually. So, it, 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 and, and when everybody puts in like that, it's not a burden on anyone, but it's a blessing to the house that is the host at that time. Everybody gets a turn. Well, this time it was the the the, the Disciples in Judea, they were going to need some help because that's where the family was going to be. And uh, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So they sent these gifts. They, they got this money together and they sent it to Judea by Barnabas and Saul. Collective economics. We see this happening. This ain't new. The church has always done this. But they had to get the people together first. And that's what that's what the Holy Spirit did. Now, chapter 12. The persecution is, is real. Uh, uh, um, we're going to get the first martyred apostle. Now, about the time Herod was king, stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. This was about um, a year after the, 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 Jesus was slain. This is about a year after the crucifixion of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the, the next uh, Passover season. Uh, during the Passover, the week leading up to Passover, uh, they eat unleavened bread. That's what he's talking about here. So the days of unleavened bread. This is that week leading up to Passover. This would have been the year after Jesus was crucified. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of court, uh, uh, soldiers. Uh, remember now, there are 100 soldiers together. Is a big, these are called centurions. But the centurions are broken up into little smaller groups when they may have a, 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 a task at hand, but you don't send them out one at a time. And for protection, they send them out by fours. So these four go, another 96 somewhere else, a group of 100 soldiers. They call them uh, centurions. But when the centurions go out in a pack of four, they were quaternions. That's what this means here. Intending after Easter, the King James translator said Easter, but it really should have been Passover, because if you look at it, the Greek word, it's it's um, it's not uh, uh, Pascha, Pascha, which when we get the, the term the Paschal Lamb, so this was the Passover, not Easter. Uh, the King James translator, they really should not have used that word Easter. We might call it Easter, but it's really, they were still celebrating, they were still utilizing the Jewish calendar, and that's what it was. Okay? Therefore, Peter kept in prison, but, pray, but, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So when Peter got arrested, they, the idea was Herod was going to have his head cut off. He was going to execute him, but the people went to pray. Mm -hmm. 
and pray they did. Verse 6. And when Herod would have brought him forth that same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. So there were four soldiers, one on each side of Peter, chained to him, and two more guarding the door. Mm -hmm. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did, and he said unto him, Cast thy garments about thee, put your clothes on, put your shoes on, Peter, come on. That's basically what he said. But put the shoes on. You know how I tell you to go uh, dump the garbage uh, down and go put the shoes on? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's what the, the angel told Peter. Put the shoes on. Put your clothes on because you got to go. Because mm -hmm. they were going to execute him the next morning. Mm -hmm. God got a plan for him and it wasn't to die today. Right. You're going to be martyred, but not today. Mm -hmm. Not tomorrow. Okay, see, when God got a plan for you, it's going to happen. And he's not going to release you from his your assignment. And you can refuse the assignment. But if you are willing to take up the assignment, and nothing going to stop the assignment from being accomplished. He's going to make sure you're able to do it. And he went out and followed him, and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angels, but thought he saw a vision. He's still kind of sleepy. He woke him up out of dead sleep. And he think it's just a vision. And when they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened up to them on its own accord. The gate just opened by itself. Mm -hmm. Now you're talking about a miracle escape. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. By the time he had cleared uh, uh, where all the people might have been, the angel was gone. Just like that. Mm -hmm. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know the surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. You see, Herod, when, when James was killed, those, the, the unconverted Jews were glad about that. Well, you know how Herod is. He, uh, basically, he just likes the praise of men. So if he thinks something is popular, that's what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. He thinks he'd be even more popular if he get rid of uh, Peter. But God had another idea, you know. Now, okay, so you, somebody might say, well, how, why did God allow James to be martyred? Well, guess what? That's part of the deal. You see, absent birth from the body you to, is to be uh, present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. James wasn't scared to die. Peter wasn't scared to die, but God wouldn't let him not right now. And when he had heard considering the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname is Mark. This is John Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Well, this is John Mark. Where many were gathered together praying. They were at John Mark's mother's house praying for Peter. Now, the, uh, the, the non-believers didn't know where they were, but Peter knew where the other believers were. They had a network going. So he knew where they were, and, uh, and uh, it, it, it's amazing. Unbelievers can't find Jesus, but uh, the believers always could. Remember when they were looking for Jesus and Mary and Martha, they said, let's go, let's go to Jesus. They knew exactly where he was. The folks were trying to kill him, couldn't find him, but Mary and Martha knew exactly where he was. Mm -hmm. Well, ain't nothing, the, the, the same process is happening here. The same dynamic is taking place. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a devil came to hearken to him over. But Rhoda got her name written in the Lamb's book. Uh, uh, Rhoda, she didn't open the door, but she saw, she heard Peter. Instead of opening the door, she ran back in, and uh, this is what she did. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. I said, girl, you crazy. He locked up in jail. Yeah. They would be dead for a moment. Mm -hmm. 
But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then they, they then said they, it's, a, it's his angel. They figured they had already killed him, and you said his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door, they saw him, and they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers which was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down to Judea to Caesarea and there abode. So here he is. Herod there went to Caesarea himself. He had the soldiers killed who lost Peter. Because this is what God do. God don't like ugly. This is one of my favorite parts of scripture right here. And when Herod was highly displeased with them entire inside him, but they came upon the court to him, and having made blasters to King Chamberlain and their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. So here he is, and you know, Herod actually taking care of them, so they, you know, they're going to suck up. And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, set upon the throne, and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god, little g, and not of a man. So they they they, they yeasting his head up. They're blowing his head up. He got the big head. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not the glory to God and he was eaten with wounds and gave up the ghost. Boy, look at him. God don't like ugly. God will share his glory with nobody. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem and when they had fulfilled their ministry, they took with them John whose surname was Mark. Now this is the beginning of uh, the, they, they're getting ready to do the, uh, uh, the their first missionary journey and, and John Mark with them. Now we're going to see some things happen as they go. John Mark was a young man at the time. Mm-hmm. He didn't know too much and he didn't have a, he, you know, he kind of was a mama's boy. Okay, and uh, in the beginning he wasn't going to fit too well. But I'm kind of getting ahead of the story. But this is how chapter 12 ends. But but look at verse 24. This is the key. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Mm -hmm. And it grew and multiplied because God put the right people together at the right time so that they can encourage each other, they can equip each other, they can empower each other and get the work done. God did not intend for any one man to do the work. He wants us working together. Collective ministry, cooperative ministry. It's God's idea. I've heard some people talk about denominations and denominationalism. God made it so, it's so plain to me, it was God's idea for people to organize and work together. Otherwise, he would not have used the term apostle, uh, uh, elder, uh, uh, pastor, uh, uh, presbyteros, episcopos. He would not use them interchangeably if he was not that concerned about how you organize the church as long as Jesus Christ is Lord and the Bible is supreme. If you were governed by elders or bishops or apostles, it does not matter to God. You can organize the church the way he wants, as long as Jesus Christ is Lord. And the Bible is what y'all preaching. The organizational structure is not a big deal to God. The man might make it a big deal, but God ain't got no problem with denominationalism. As long as Jesus Christ is Lord and the Bible is preached. And, 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 and the word of God grew and multiplied. Mm-hmm. And, and I believe if we continue to work to God, work together, mm-hmm. the word of God will continue to grow. People will continue to get saved, but it still requires, in order for a conversion of souls, there still is the requirement a convergence of people working together for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. Now we're gonna pick up next time. <coughs> In chapter 13, 
And so we'll see Barnabas and Saul being sent off on, on a on a first initial missionary journey. Some great things are going to happen then. You're going to learn some things that you probably did not know. So you tune in next Wednesday. We're going to be at chapter 13. We're going to do 13 and 14 next week. And uh, we're going to we're going to pick up there next time. I'm kind of tempted to go into it now, but um, we, we'll wait till next week. I, I mean, I, I got a little excited when I got to rereading this, but it is kind of a, a long chapter, and it um, I don't want to add to this because we'll probably end up going over. But we'll see y'all next time, and we're going to see you Sunday morning at um, at ten fifteen, uh, and we'll be back here with um, chapter thirteen of of uh, the Acts of the Apostles next Wednesday. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people one more time. So we ask you right now that you will continue to keep us and bless us. I lift up the High Tower family who's still mourning the death of their brother, uh, my good friend and co-rascal back in the day, uh, uh, Calvin. Uh, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you will give that family comfort and let them know that all things work together for the good to those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Uh, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Uh, just um, uh, a, a reminder, uh, their uh, Saved by Grace Outreach will be sponsoring a citywide revival in the um, parking lot of Magic Mall, the Magic Mall parking lot. Uh, let, me, let me give me a second. Let me get that date. That date. I got it here somewhere. I'm looking forward to it. I, it's going to be in June. Okay, I'm going to get it and I'm going to post it or repost the one that, that uh, Apostle Pink has sent me. I'll repost that one when I find it. But uh, I'm looking forward to the uh, Citywide Tent Revival uh, in the parking lot of, um, of, um, of the Magic Mall on 50. Uh, the, uh, let see where, I, I know I got this thing. She sent me the link a week ago. Okay, I'll find it. In any event, I'll post it then. We'll see y'all next time. Y'all take care, be blessed.